Hey, I'm Frank May of The Great Backyard. Today, we're here to talk about in-ground pools, more specifically, planning for the uh, installation of the right in-ground pool for you and your family. And even broader than that, considering all the elements of an environment which are going to play a part in the lifestyle that's gonna occur out by the pool. Got my backyard at the great backyard. So we're gonna look at elements to consider up front so that as we build this thing, as we move forward, we make choices which open the door for further additions down the road, which may be further enhancements to things that we discover we like to do in this, our fifth room at our house. So we're gonna start with the question of why. Why do we want a pool? Other than the obvious, the kids have been begging for it, the summers have been a little long and really hot. The thought of just having that right there at home, having friends over all the time, all of this just creates a picture in our mind that summer's gonna be different with pool ownership, but there's so much more that may be motivating us that's really gonna help us plan this thing appropriately. So what are some of those factors that are oftentimes barreling around in our mind as we're contemplating in-ground pool ownership? We may be socially motivated. Pools do bring people together. They bring friends over. They bring family together. They take devices out of our hands. They connect us with one another. It may be exercise. We may sit around too much on our devices in front of our TVs. We know that we need an excuse that's compelling and fun to draw us out and draw us in, into fellowship with one another and in an active way. Pools are very healthy. They're very movement oriented. They're very fun. They contribute to well-being and exercise in so many ways. It may be therapy. Our, our, our lives are full. Our lives are stressed. I mean, just driving in traffic can boil us up a little bit. And uh, coming home and turning on a water feature and just sitting back and putting your head back and listening to the water and letting the kids play and just kind of checking out for 10 minutes may be just a vision of perfection for you, the parent or grandparent. But more importantly, what are we gonna do with it? How are we gonna live with it and interact with it? Those are the considerations that are gonna weigh upon our choices as we kind of uh, lay out this environment before we break ground. Okay, so we've decided we want a pool and let's look forward. Let's look forward at our lives and how are they gonna interact with the pool? Birthday parties, weddings even, all the events. Are we gonna be grilling out? Do we need to accommodate for a kitchen? Do we wanna build fires and just gather everyone around for some s'mores and prayer time or devotion time or whatever you wanna do with your fire time? How do we wanna unwind in this environment? What sort of rooms do we need to incorporate into our vision? We don't have to build them now. We know we want a pool now and we may stop right there for budgetary purposes. However, this is probably gonna be a long-term investment. A lot of life is gonna occur right here. How are we gonna expand that in the future and how are we gonna accommodate for that right now? We've got a wood-burning fire pit area with surround seating. We've got a gas, easy on, easy off fire area just for adults to kind of sit back, turn it on, unwind on a cool evening or just for the ambiance. We've got lots of dining for big parties. We've got grilling, we've got a small kitchen for food prep and serving, even the bathroom. You know, what, what is the accessibility of changing and uh, what is the uh, accessibility for the bathroom facilities? And finally, we need to look at lighting and landscaping. And, and, and these are just things we need to plan on. So let's look at these things up front, okay? So I'm not here to make uh, any decisions for you. I'm just here to, to encourage you to look uh, comprehensively at this project. We're gonna go through some bullet points. It'd be great if you had the time to jot these down and, and just sit and talk with each other and answer these questions for yourselves. So let's start with the easiest. Let's start with lighting. We all want in-pool lighting. It's a safety concern. It's a you know night usage. It, it, it's ambiance. There's so many additions to that. But perimeter lighting is very important too. And I say that because we've got a large environment. We've got a large patio here and we're going to have many late night parties. Teenagers are going to stay up. And you don't want part of the patio to be in the black and the pool to be the only thing lit. So how are we going to light this whole environment and make it usable at any hour that we want to interact with it? Another popular poolside pastime is laying out. Just kicking back on that chase lounger, maybe taking a nap, chatting with our friends. It's important to ask the question how many people we want to accommodate sunbathing, how many people we want to accommodate lounging up front because that's going to dictate what we do with the patio to a large extent. We're going to have to have sufficient room for the proper number of chase lounges for poolside tanning or lounging. 
Another important element is kind of the living room idea. Something very comfortable, just to plop down in, look at each other, just relax, enjoy your drink and conversation. Again, the kids are taken care of, they're having the time of their lives in the pool, and you get to just connect with your friends or your family members. And, and where are we gonna do that? Some of that's gonna occur as we're sun tanning during the day, but in the evening, oftentimes, we kinda of want a living room atmosphere, something very comfortable and inviting, something to retire to. So consider how we're gonna furnish this area, if we're gonna cover this area, are we gonna have it shaded? How big is this area gonna be? How many people do we want to be able to gather in this area? And then, finally, we're gonna look at, do we wanna warm this area in some way? Another very popular poolside pastime is dining. Pull the pizzas out, you got a pool party, you got a cake to cut. How many people do we want to have proper seats at any given time? That's also gonna have an impact on what kind of deck we do and how big that deck is gonna be, just like that chase lounge consideration. Where are we gonna cook the food? Are we gonna cook the food poolside? Are we gonna serve it poolside? Are we gonna walk it out from the house? How close is the pool to the kitchen? If it's a detached environment, we really need to think about some, some preparatory counter space, the grill itself, what size grill, and any wash-up facilities we may need. So you, you may go from full-scale kitchen to just a grill and a little bit of island with a serving cart. That simple. There's a broad spectrum. But nonetheless, I think most of us do see ourselves grilling out, having burger parties. And it's a great place for Dad to flex his cooking muscles in front of everybody. That grill is just Dad's turf sometimes, isn't it? Now we're gonna hop over to warmth and ambiance. And oftentimes we achieve this with fire. There's a real simple solution. Take a fire pit that's gas burning, throw it onto the patio somewhere, and put some Adirondacks around it, and let's all just gather around the fire pit. That's good ambiance. It's not really a good solution for heat. You gotta be right on top of that flame with a fire pit to really generate heat sufficient enough to take the edge off a cool fall night or a cool spring night. The wood burn fireplace is great for heat. Everybody can get around that thing even in the dead of winter and, and, and feel comfortable if you got that fire big enough. The gas, again, you gotta be close to it. It's for ambiance, but oh, it's so convenient. You just walk out, that pilot light's on, you turn the switch, and you're off and running. You're just kind of unwinding and chatting around the fire. A little bit of warmth thrown off, but it's just more the ambiance that we enjoy out of a gas fire outside. One of the important things to consider is shade. If many of your summer days are going to be spent out here with the kids splashing around in the pool and mom sitting poolside, she may not be that keen on getting in the pool and throwing kids around, but she sure as heck wants to enjoy her relaxation time out by the poolside. But it becomes a bit stifling in the heat of the summer with the sun pelting on us all day, and we need to think about a place to retreat. Where are we going to do that? Are we going to go back inside and just watch the kids from, from the house, or are we going to have a shaded environment that we're going to incorporate in the pool project? Finally, as we look at shade, there's so many ways to go about it. Just like with the fire consideration, the kitchen consideration. Do we want a pavilion? It's immovable, it's permanent, it's rainproof, it's a shelter. You know, if inclement weather crops up, it's shade from the sun. Uh, there are pergolas. Pergolas are classic, they're, they're timeless, they're, they're, they're not incredibly effective for creating shade and, and pulling you out of the sun but boy, do they sure add to the environment. And you can grow vines up over them and make them romantic and, and give yourself that shade. It's gonna take time to do that with a pergola. And finally, probably the easiest solution are just what we call uh, cantilevered umbrellas, rotational cantilevered umbrellas. That's a big umbrella that hangs on an arm that can go over a living room. You can put it down and rotate it out. You can open up everything for the sun or you can pop your shade up in an instant. You can put it down for the storms. You're not locked into that pavilion idea where it's immovable and permanent. Uh, so it, at least at the outset of the project, certainly consider how you're gonna achieve some retreat from the sun and incorporate shade into it. These are three very popular considerations. Again, I would encourage you to look at these things up front because they should at some point, uh, if you're gonna add them, they should be considered up front. Okay, so we very broadly looked at the topic of uh, wh what are gonna be the necessary elements around this pool besides the pool to accommodate our vision for our lifestyle in, in, in this, again, our fifth room of the house and probably in the summer, our most popular room. So after we have answered the question of why, we answer the question of what, what do we want in this environment? Then we move on to the question of how. 
How are we gonna do this? What kind of pull do we need? And the first consideration we're gonna look at are vinyl pulls, and then we're gonna look at fiberglass pulls. What, the pull specifically, separate it from the environment now, and we're gonna dive in to a vinyl pull next.